Hey fellow gliders, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the newest column that Glide has released and it is a powerful column and it is available on any plan regardless if you are free or business tier. All you have to do is enable it in your settings. Now this column will save you so much time, so much effort, so much brain power and it's one that has been the most requested feature from Glide over the past two years. This column is the query column. Any great database that's going to feed an app or a software solution needs to have some sort of querying feature. Now, what's a query? A query is basically means search this database with these conditions, with this arrangement or with this sorting, and return some records. In Glide, currently what we had to do was jump through hoops to make this happen, or rely on clunky spreadsheet formulas that took forever to calculate and bring back to the app. But now we have instant querying functionality in Glide through a native query column. Let's talk about it. The first thing you have to do is dive into each of your team folders where you want to enable querying, go to the previews section up at the top, and then select query column. Turn that on because we're going to use it all over the place now. All right, I'm going to close that down and open up a, an app where we can maybe use some querying features. In the data section, when we go to add a new column, we now have the ability to access a query. The first thing you have to remember is that when you use a query column, the result is though you are doing a multiple relation. So uh, currently, when you do a relation and you match multiple, you're relating one item inside of your one table to the value of a different column in some other table. Now it could be the same table if you're doing a self relation, but you're basically you're matching values here. Now when you're using a query column, the end result is basically the same. You're going to return a multiple relation to that data set. So here we can select a source. The source can be a table in and of itself, or it can actually be a relation already made to that source. Okay, from after you've selected your source, then you can filter the records of that source and induce sorting and include limits based upon what sort of data you want to return. All right, so let's take a look at some practical examples here. I'm gonna create a new table and we're gonna call this query examples. All right, let's start simple. Maybe we want to get a list of all users who are currently subscribed to our app. That way we can display them in an inline list somewhere in an admin dashboard. So in our users table, we have this relation to active subscriptions, and we're going to use this as a condition on that query. So before what we had to do is create an if then else column that would say if this is not empty, then result their email, then we could do a relation or get a lookup of the email addresses. We don't have to do that anymore. So now under query, we can go and create a new query and we can call this subscribers. And our source is gonna be our users table and we're gonna to filter to where that relation to active subscription is not empty. And if we want to, we can put in some sorting. Maybe we wanna sort by last name, right? Or we can sort by whoever is in the lead, or we can just leave it as sheet order and we can put some limits on it as well. Maybe we want like the top five subscribers. So we could do a limit of five and sort by their XP. So we can get a leaderboard of the top five people who are subscribers to our app. So again, before this would have to be a lot of if then else columns and then some, some trickery in order to make this happen. But now we can do it all in one fell swoop, right? We hit done and now we have our relation of people. There's person one and there's person two. And now we can display this in an inline list. Or if we wanted to grab some metrics on these two people, like, hey, how many points on average do our, my subscribers have? Right? I could create a roll up column based upon this query. Because again, queries are the same thing as multiple relations. And you can do roll ups on multiple relations. So here I could say uh, average points of subscribers. Right? So we'll use a roll up and we can reference our subscribers query and get the amount of points and calculate the average. So that's the average amount of points that our subscribers have. Silly example, but you can see the power already with this new query column, All right? All right, let's take a look at another complicated example. So in my users table, I have a bunch of people and they have points. Let's give these people some arbitrary points. Uh, let's say 400 and let's say like 3000. Okay, and maybe these points correlate to 
their ranking, right? So here I have a list of ranks with some thresholds of minimum and maximum, and we want to determine what rank these users are at. This used to be really complicated or really tedious, right? What we had to do before was create a really long if then else column and say, hey, if this person, right, has between zero and 100, then give them the rank of novice. Otherwise, give them the rank of bronze and so forth, right? Um, and then we had to make a relation and then do a lookup to grab the rank. And then, so it was a series of columns, right? Or we could go about it another way. We could have grabbed all of the um, starting XP threshold and then added this user to that array and then sorted this array and then figured out the index of this array to where this person existed and then do a relation of the index back to the ranks, blah, blah, blah. Right, so again, super complicated, required lots of columns. But now we can determine their rank in a single column, in a single query. So watch this. I'm gonna go ahead and add a column to the right. Okay, we're going to do a query, and we're going to query the ranks because that's where we want to determine. Right? We want to determine what rank they're at. So we're going to determine their rank, and we're going to do a filter. And you can add not just one filter. You can add multiple filters. So we're going to select their rank where the points minimum for that rank, or we could say, where yeah, where the points minimum for the rank is less than or equal to the user's current rank. Now, we need to know each person's rank for this. So what we can do is use this cool this row feature as part of the query. So now we can do a query on each row within that table as well, and it's going to result in something different based upon your filtering thresholds. This is mind-blowing. All right, so we're going to do um, this row XP. Okay, but we also want to grab the maximum, right? And where the points maximum for that rank is greater than or equal to that user's XP. So this row, XP. And we don't need to sort anything. We don't need to limit anything. We hit done. And now we can just, now we can see here that we have the user's relation to a rank. So this is basically a relation again. So query to the rank. Right. Now remember, this is a multiple relation, so we can't just do a lookup of the value, we have to do a single value if we want a singular value from that query. In this case, we're only getting one response, I want one value. Can't do a lookup because it's going to result in a single item array, we don't want an array, we want a singular value. So. For that reason, whenever you're using a query and you want a single value, use the single value column. So I'm gonna add a column to the right. I'm gonna call this uh, single value SV, and then the rank. And again, we're gonna use the single value. That's under the other single value. We're gonna reference our query. We're gonna get the first, which is the only value from our query rank and grab the rank. And now we can display this item, this ranking, in that user's user profile. And if we want to get the image, we can just duplicate this. We can call this rank image. And again, we're going to get the very first value from that query and grab the user's rank image. So look at that. So this is absolutely amazing. So again, I can now delete all of these unnecessary, complicated, um, helper columns basically in order to determine what it was originally and now I can just leverage this one clean query column in order to grab the values that I need for that particular user. Let's look at another example. So in this example we have a list of events. Those events have RSVPs where someone can say they're attending that event and then they're saying whether they're attending or not attending. All right? And maybe want to grab a list of all of the events that I'm saying I'm attending and filtered all the way down to just the events for today. And we wanna have that data inside of our users table so that we can do some rollups and see how many, we can do some counts on that data, right? So this again, that would've been super complicated. We had to create a bunch of if then else's. So like in this RSVP table, we would've had to create an if then else that says like, hey, if they're attending, then output um, the user email and then relate the user to that if then else. Or we could say something like if they're attending and the user is the signed in user, then output the event ID and then we could relate the event to that column in order to see which events that currently signed in user is attending and then do some rollups based on that. Again, super complicated. So now what we can do is just use the query formula. So first what I'm gonna do is query 
if um, so that user has RSVP'd to that event. Now there's two ways to link the event to the RSVP here, and we wanna go through the event. We could either do a query where we're saying, hey, um, query all of the RSVP table where the row ID is the event ID. We could do that. Or we could create a relation to the RSVP itself first. Right? So here's the benefit of doing the relation first. If we just do the query and say, hey, we're gonna say, we're gonna grab all the RSVPs and we're gonna filter to where the event ID is this row's, right, um, row ID, then it still has to grab all of the data here in order to make that filtering possible. So it will be slower, especially if you have lots of data that you are querying. So in that regard, it's better to do an, um, a, a relation first before you do the query and then use the relation as the source. So we're gonna grab a list of all of the RSVPs. We're gonna to filter to where the event ID of that RSVP is the row of that event, the row ID, okay? and where attending is checked. All right? And we can sort them in order if we wanted to. We don't actually need to, we'll hit done. All right, so now this is a query of attending. And then we wanna grab a list of all of the users who are attending, right? So we can say, uh, look up attending emails. I can just grab a lookup from that query to grab a list of all of the users who are attending. And now we wanna relate the user to that event. But maybe we only want to know how many events they're attending today, right? So that we need to know the start and end time. Is it recurring today? So in the users table, we can do another query here. We'll say query today's events attending. And again, this would have been a series of if then else columns. We don't need to do that anymore. So we can do a query and the source is going to be the events. And we want a list of all of the events that I'm attending that are happening today. So we're gonna filter first to where it's today. So maybe where the start time is within today and where the lookup attending emails contains the person's email. There we go. So now we can get a list of each person's RSVPs for today. Now, one thing to notice is that whenever you are querying an entire table, it is gonna take a minute because it has to go through each record one at a time and then do the filtering and so forth. So whenever you can, use a relation as the source. So if I wanted to speed up this query a little bit, what I could first do is relate the user ID or the user email to the list of events that they're attending and then do the query based on that value. But in this case, we can see that the query did work just fine um, and it resulted in user number one attending two events today and user number five attending one event today. And we can verify that by going to events and we can see that um, today, May 8th, Right, there's only two events, and person one is attending this one event, and person one and five are attending the second event. So the query is working correctly. And then if we wanna get a count of how many they're attending today, we just do a roll up. So we can say a count attending today, and we just do a roll up on that query to get the number that they need. Okay, done, and now we can display this in our app. So somewhere in our user profile screen, we can create a new collection, maybe a card layout, and we could say for our title. And now as a user, I can see exactly which events I'm attending today. They are in chronological order. I can now dive into the event and see some details about the event that I'm attending today. And all of this was possible because Glide has now given us this powerful query column. Final example, let's take a look at a task sheet. So here we have a list of tasks, who it's assigned to, whether that task has been completed or not, when it was assigned, when it's due, and a current status. And maybe we want to display a list of all tasks assigned to each person 
where the priority is urgent, meaning it's either due today or it was due yesterday, it's overdue, um, and display those in a list for the user as their priority sheet, right? Um, so here we have to do is go to users, and again, we could create a relation first. It's always best to do your query maybe based off of a relation. It's going to load much faster. Um, for all intents and purposes, I'm going to do just a query by itself here. So we're going to say query priority tasks. And we're going to do a query. And the source is going to be the task sheet. We're going to filter to where assigned to is that person's row. Okay. Also, we're going to filter to where completed is not checked because we only want the open tasks. And we want where assigned, or the or sorry, the date that it was due is either it's on or before today. This is due today or before today. So it's either overdue or it's due today. All right, and we see that we have a few tasks Per, per user here. All right, and then we're gonna sort them, and we can sort them by either the date that they were due or the date they're assigned, right? So completely up to you, how you wanna do your sorting. Maybe we wanna do the ones that were assigned first, right? So it's order first in, first out kind of thing. So we'll do the date assigned in chronological order, and then done. And now we have a list of priority tasks. And so back on our users table, we can display those in a collection of a checklist. And that checklist can be the query, a priority tasks. And the check is going to be whether or not it's completed. We have the task. We have a description of its current status. And the title can be priority tasks. If you want to see exactly how many priority tasks there are, we can create a rollup just like we did before. So we'll do a rollup of count priority tasks. And we'll just grab a task count like so. And for our units, we could say priority tasks to complete. And we'll put that before like so. And so now we can make that as the title. And so now we have this dynamic component that's based off of that query. So as you remember, one of the conditions of that query was that it wasn't complete. So if we complete this task, then it no longer meets that criteria, which means it won't be part of the query, which means it should be hidden then from this component. Let's go ahead and mark it as complete, just like so. How fantastic is that? All right, so hopefully you've now discovered the power of the query column. If you have any questions at all, feel free to leave me a comment below. You can also reach out to me at Twitter at rpetito. And as always, thanks for watching.